Today in our 2017 GMC Sierra 2500 HD, we'll be having a look at and installing the B&W Turnover Ball Underbed Gooseneck Trailer Hitch with Custom Installation Kit. Part number BWGNRK1016. As you can see, it's a completely underbed system. We have our nice spring-loaded safety chain loops right here. Our ball release mechanism here to latch it into place so when we want to store it upside down we can or have it locked in tow position we can as well. Now that we've shown you underneath, we'll show you how much room we have in the bed of the truck. With everything being below our bed, it is a nice clean look and we don't worry about losing any of our valuable bed space. As you'll notice, even our safety chain loops that are spring loaded sit in the bottom part of our corrugation and don't stick up above the corrugation itself. Now you can see our gooseneck head right here is a square opening which takes our B&W 2 and 5 16 inch ball and insert it any direction, doesn't matter. Just drop down right on in there. Here it is in this toe position. Now we have our handle release right now. So if you want to have it in store position, just lift up on it with the handle released. Flip it on over. And here's what it looks like in the stored position. Your ball is readily accessible the next time you want to tow your trailer, but you don't have to worry about taking up any of your valuable bed space or misplacing your ball. So we'll pull out on our latch right here, rotate it clockwise, and that is the open position. And we want to secure our ball in either the stored or the towing position. Just turn it counterclockwise and release it and it locks it into place. And when we release our handle mechanism, you'll see how the ball is secured. The pin comes in and locks the ball in place. With our latch release, you can see how easy it is to switch our ball over from the stored position to the towed position. There's a little handle built in. Reach up on it with one finger, pull up, flip it over, drop back down. Now, with the latch secured and you hooked up to your trailer, you've got your easy to use safety chain loops right here, which are fairly large, shouldn't have any problem hooking onto those. This hitch has a weight capacity of a 7,500 pound vertical load limit, which is the amount forcing down, and a 30,000 pound max gross towing capacity. Obviously, you'll want to go by whatever your truck is rated for and not exceed the limits of your truck. Now what I really like about this gooseneck hitch compared to others on the market is that it's a very quality, well-constructed piece made right here in the US of A with American-made steel. And now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. All right, we find ourselves in our passenger side rear wheel well. We need to remove our exhaust heat shield right here. There's a total of four bolts that hold it in place. We can find two of those on our frame rail. These are 13 millimeter bolts. We can discard these bolts once we have them removed. We will not be reinstalling the heat shield or the bolts. All right, we can find our third bolt right here on our cross member right to the front of where our spare tire hanger is. We did remove our spare tire earlier just to make it easier for you to see what's going on. Here, our fourth and final bolt is on the front cross member just at the rear of our fuel tank. Okay, now we can grab our heat shield, slide it out, and discard it. Now we need to drill our four inch diameter hole in the bed of our truck. In order to do that, we need to measure appropriately from the correct spot. We'll be measuring from the end of the bed and not the end of our tailgate. It is critical that we measure from the end of the bed and you will find the appropriate measurement in the instructions according to your bed length. Okay, we got our hole marked right here. It's right in front of the dimple in the bed for where our factory gooseneck would be, and that may vary depending on your bed length. So we'll drill a pilot hole first using a small drill bit. OK, 
Okay, we'll use that as a guide for our hole saw now. Now to help prevent rust in the future, we'll take some spray paint and go along the inside edge where our bare metal is, where we cut out. All right, now on our passenger side wheel well, we need to trim our flange on the bedside here a little bit so we can slide our rails in position. You can find the measurements and the instructions. So we just have it marked off according to the measurements right above our bump stop here in front of our cross member. I'll be using a rotary tool to do this. You can use a grinder as well. All right, this rail right here is our front rail. This section here where we have a long segment where it comes down, this is on our driver's side. This second hole right here, we'll take one of our short half inch bolts, stick it through the hole, and we'll place on this rubber O-ring over the bolt, and this will keep it from falling off and making it difficult to insert this bolt over the fuel tank. Okay, with the bolt in place, we will now slide our rail in position over the frame through the notch that we made. And we'll slide it to the front of the truck. Quick tech tip, before you install your rear rail, run the bolts in and out of the threads a couple times to help clean out the threads from the powder coating finish. Now our rear rail, you'll notice that the holes are offset. We want the holes facing closest to the bottom, closest to the frame of the truck after we have the rail rotated in place. So to install this, lay it on its side, raise it on up, and slide it in, up, and onto your frame. And then we can just rotate it so the holes are closest to the bottom. Sometimes you can use a pair of channel locks on it to get the leverage you need. Slide our channel locks over and rotate it. Okay, now we need to raise our center section up and connect it to our rails. You'll notice our hole where our gooseneck ball comes through is offset. It'll be closest to the rear of the truck. Okay, now with an extra set of hands, we'll raise it on up over our exhaust. Okay, we got it in position now. So we'll slide our front rail up with the bolt that has the o-ring on it through the hole we'll place on a lock washer on the bolt and we'll thread on a nut we'll take another bolt stick it through the hole next to it Place on the lock washer again. And another nut. And we'll repeat the same process for the other two locations on the front rail. Okay, now we'll take one of our two inch long half inch bolts. It's one with the shoulder on it, a lock washer, a flat washer, and we'll connect our center section to our rear rail. And we'll get a few turns on it on a wrench to make sure that it started properly. So we'll just get this down a couple turns. Just to make sure our threads are grabbing onto the rail properly.
and we'll do the same for the other two. Okay, now we'll take one of our larger bolts, lock washer, and a flat washer. Take our frame bracket, slide it between our rails, and bolt it into the weld nuts on our truck. Okay, now we will bolt our frame bracket to our rear rail using a bolt, lock washer, and a flat washer. Okay, now we'll bolt our front rail to our frame bracket using a bolt. A flat washer a lock washer, and then a nut. Now we'll repeat this same process on our driver's side. Okay, now we'll tighten down all of our bolts securely that hold our center section to our rails. Now we will tighten up our rails to our frame bracket. Now we'll tighten up our frame bracket to our frame. torque our hardware to the amount specified instructions, starting with the center section to the rails first. Okay, now we'll torque our rails to the frame brackets. Now we'll torque the frame brackets to the frame. Now we need to drill the holes in our bed for our safety chain loops to attach to. Using our hitch as a guide, we have two holes on each side of it. We'll use a small drill bit and go straight up through the bed using this as a pilot hole. And we'll repeat the same process for the other two. Okay, we'll enlarge these holes from on top using a step bit. Okay, with our holes enlarged, we'll now drop down our safety chain loops. Make sure they go through nice and smooth on both sides. And then just like we did with our four inch hole, we'll spray paint the bare metal so we don't have to deal with any rust. All right, now that we've painted our holes and our paint's dry, we'll drop down the U-bolts. And we'll go underneath to secure our hardware. Okay, here's where our safety chain U-bolts come down. We have a spring. Small diameter will face down. Then we have a lock nut. We'll thread that on. We'll do the same on all four U-bolt locations. All right, now we'll tighten our nuts till they're flush with the end of the U-bolt. Okay, that one's flush. And we'll do the same for the other one. 
Now we'll take our handle for our ball release mechanism, insert it on the driver's side through the slot in our frame bracket. All right, we'll pull it on through, line it up with the hole in our latch mechanism. We'll take our carriage bolt here, stick it through the hole on the back side, make sure our handle's sitting on it. Okay, we'll take our flange nut now and secure our handle onto the carriage bolt. And then we'll tighten down the nut. All right, now that we've finished our install, we can go ahead and replace our spare tire and hit the road. And that completes our look at an installation of the B&W Turnover Ball Underbed Gooseneck Trailer Hitch with Custom Installation Kit, part number BWGNRK1016 on our 2017 GMC Sierra 2500 HD.